Okay, so I'm Luke Day Forge, I'm Head of LTA in um, Development and Society. And uh, my quick uh, talk is about one of Andrew's uh, disruptive technologies, which is to do with uh, producing videos um, as a, an assessment activity. Um, I'll, I'll talk about, I hope to give you an inkling of some of the potential students producing their own videos. But um, although there's lots of ways in which the technology to do this is ubiquitous, technically it's not quite as easy to do as it should be. Um, and I can give you a, a, a bit of a solution that I think we've come across that might help to actually uh, implement this um, in practice. Just to talk about the context where I try to introduce this, um, I've got uh, a, a seminar group of students, a module leader, where I've got a seminar groups of students who do presentations on a, a research topic, it's a level six module. And there's all sorts of great things about getting students to do presentations. Um, it gets them to focus on communicating to a specific audience, it helps improve their confidence around their, their language, their verbal skills, their one language, their use of audiovisual technology and so on. Um, it enables them to interact with their peers, all sorts of questioning and answering, gets them used to sharing and posing questions to other students. And the feedback that we've had from students is that it's good in all sorts of ways, it's good for employability, it's good for all sorts of skills, nerve-wracking, but they really appreciate the opportunity to do that presentation. It's quite a common learning activity that we do across across the university. But, and this was the driver for moving to videos of presentations, it can be quite tedious for students to sit through uh, hour after hour, if not week after week, of listening to students doing 15, 20 minute presentations. Uh, and what you end up with is students spending a lot of time in a situation which is essentially quite didactic. They're just sitting there and listening to all the students talking, sometimes not particularly well, and it can be quite tedious boring, and, and uh, you lose a lot of learning opportunities because of that. So the driver for me is to think about how could we um, still allow students to do uh, these kind of presentations without forcing them to sit through a group of 24 students and um, do uh, their presentations. Now, the inspiration for moving towards student-produced videos was actually a guy called Chris Stokes, who worked in the dental school at the University of Sheffield. And right back in 2007, when um, uh, mobile phones began to sort of have usable video cameras, started A, filming his own um, sort of practical work that he was doing on teeth, um, but he was still thinking, well, could we get students to actually film the work, the practical work that they were doing on, on teeth? And he submitted that as an assessment, and he had all sorts of worries about whether students would have the technical capability uh, to be able to do that. And he was talking to some students about uh, uh, whether he th they thought they could do it. And they showed him this, that made him think that, yeah, actually, this is something that's quite easy. This was something that students produced themselves as part of their intention to society uh, fundraising. So you can see that from that, the students were pretty competent already in being able to not only film themselves, and that was all filmed on uh, mobile devices, but to actually edit it as well. So on the basis of that, I guess I kind of thought, well, you know, surely then we can get students from using their own devices to actually have a go at producing videos of each other, presenting and submitting those, rather than having to have, have to do it face to face in class. So the vision that I had is that we would get students into groups of four, uh, sorry, five or six, that they would be presenting to each other, they'd be filming those presentations and then submitting them as their uh, assessed product. Um, now, there are challenges in that, and the challenges were things to do with like, you know, did students actually have access to cameras? Could they produce these kind of films? Where would they store the films? How would we give markers access to them? What was the venue that they would uh, use? There were things like that. Now, the way that we actually um, did the work was um, to, uh, to, to get students to book up um, self-study rooms within the assets centre in their groups of five and six, do the presentations within there, so they were doing the themselves, they were doing the filming themselves in there, um, and, um, and uh, you know, taking those away as their assessed product. 
But to make sure that they knew how to do this, we had a kind of formative tester where we did spend one session getting them to do little two-minute presentations, filming each other and checking that they knew how to do that filming and how to, how to um, upload it. We did suggest that they use their own devices, but we had a backup where they could borrow flip cameras from a resource room that we've got in DNS. And I think about 15% of them did borrow um, flip cameras and the rest used their own <coughs> iPads, tablets or, or mobile phones. What they then did was um, they... Oh, sorry. Let's see my technical competence here. Um, so... Uh, what they then did was uh, we used new Google Shoe apps uh, and Google Drive. It's a place where they can store the videos, so you can get them to actually load video into their Google Shoe app. And from there, they could get a, a URL and they could post that URL into um, a, an assessment drop-off submission point um, on Blackboard. Um, what happens is that once they've done that, you get as a marker, you get a URL that will take you through to the uh, to the Google Drive video, and you can then uh, view view the video. There's a few technicalities to do with getting privacy settings right and making sure that you can share it. But basically, um, it does seem to work. Certainly from the formative testing, it does seem to have worked. Try it for real uh, next semester. Um, so. There's still a couple of issues to do with the length of time to, it can take to upload a video onto Google Drive and um, it seems to work quite well when you've got a good uh, wireless connection, another thing with Andrews. Um, uh, so they need to perhaps go to the ad set to, to do that, to upload from their tablet to Google Drive. And there's a couple of issues with sound quality when we film in a big classroom, which I'm hoping will come when they're in an ad set study room, which is much smaller. But there we go. That, I think we overcame some of the tech pushes. and hopefully sharing those might enable you to, to uh, have a go at that yourself. Excellent. Thank you very much, Luke.